Open your mouth. Spread your legs. Clear. Let's go. What up, what up, what up? You already know what it is, man. It's that season four, Dog in the Yard, your boy Pistol P. And you already know, we got Nori, that part two. You know what I'm saying? I hope you guys enjoy that number one. But here go that part two. All questions that, you know, anything that you might think that we missed, you're going to catch it on that number two. You know what I'm saying? So let's just get right to it, man. You already know. Drink chat, Nori. Let's go, my brother. Dog in the Yard. When you in that Tampa Bay area, make sure you reach out to my boy, Gus Torres, man. If you want anything that has to do with real estate, man, make sure you hit him up. You get the lowest prices and the finest houses, man. Trust me when I tell you. But don't forget to mention my name. You already know that Pistol P to get you that early discount. And that's my brother, man, Gus Torres. You already know, out in the Tampa Bay area. Make sure you hit him up, man. Sell, buy, invest, all that. Make sure you hit him up, man, because he focused with that out there. Tampa Bay, you already know, it's your boy Pistol, man. Get at me. You never look back. Mm -hmm. Came home, sold albums, mm -hmm. did great. Um, then mm -hmm. at one point, you 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 uh decided to do your podcast. You know, at one point in your life, you felt it was the need to 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 bring something to hip hop as far as you know you know drink champs. Well, I'll tell you. Um, and this is really for the, your listeners. This is really for the people that think. Me and EFN had a whole different show on Sirius Satellite that didn't work. And if you go look it up, it's on YouTube. It's called Militainment Crazy Raw Radio. It was on Sirius Satellite. The shit did not work. Mm. EFN was relentless. Like, this is great. This is great content. It's just we got it on the wrong platform. Mm. This is what EFN was stuck on. So, this is what I'm trying to tell y'all. The first time, if it don't work, do it again. Do it and keep trying. So, we did the same exact show. If we look this up right now, it's called Military Crazy World Radio. We have Tiger Bone. We make it noise. We got the same exact characters. Just It's just we didn't have guests. So, uh, the second time around, um, it was this guy named, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say his name, a guy named Tack Stone. I went and did Tack Stone's show, and when I did his show, Jay-Z called me. And Jay-Z was like, yo, you know, boom, boom, boom. I ain't gonna discuss too much because, you know, that was within us. But he was like, yo, you know, I think you should make that right. So I was like, you know what? If I was wrong about this, I'm gonna make it right. But when I hung up with him, I was like, what the fuck just happened? Hmm. Jay-Z just called me on Thanksgiving about a podcast. Hmm. So I, the light went off in my head. I said, wait a minute. Mm. He ain't called me about this dude's podcast. He called me about what I said on this dude's podcast. And then I did Combat Jack. And then after that, I knew there's something about podcasts. I could accidentally listen to your song. Mm. I could accidentally watch your video. You can't accidentally listen to a podcast. Mm. You got to hit that button. You got to go in there, go subscribe, in there. Yeah. all that. So I, I started to notice and I said, you know what? This is the next wave. And just like when I did reggaeton, everyone laughed at me. Mm -hmm. And to, to, to a year and a half later, everyone was doing reggaeton. But my first year doing podcasts, everyone said this. this he fell off. It's over for him. Mm. And then two years later, everybody has a podcast now. Yeah. Everybody, everybody, everybody follow suit. <laughs> everybody follow suit. So yeah, that shit crazy, huh? When you're the first one, they're gonna scrutinize you. They're gonna tell you you bobozo. Yeah. They're gonna tell you you're not doing it right. But stick to your fucking guns because I did that shit. When I fucked with Pharrell, people laughed at me. I brought Pharrell around. That nigga had a tight ass t-shirt on. He had a choker this this tight. People said this guy's never gonna work. Mm -hmm. I stuck with Pharrell. Pharrell's one of the richest producers in the world. Yeah. But I I took the scrutiny. I stuck with Swiss Beats. Swiss Beats just sold his company for almost 30 million, I believe. 
I stuck with Swiss Beast. Swiss Beast came around me, they called him D Nephew. He didn't even have a name. That's yeah, what yeah. they was calling him D's D nephew. nephew. Yeah, yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. Stuck with that. So, uh, I saw it through. I went to Puerto Rico, I fell in love with this music called reggaeton. I came back, I was saying names like Daddy Yankee and Tego Calderon and Don Omar and Winston Yandel and Zion and Lennox. And people were looking at me like, what the fuck is wrong with the Morelito? What's up with the Cocolo? That's what uh -huh. they're calling me. They're calling me. Oh, yeah, I know the, I know the nicknames. I know I know that. I'm black and Puerto Rican. I know them. I know what the fuck y'all call me when we're not around. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, really? Y'all don't know these guys. It was nothing. And then two years later, everybody, even my brother, Fat Joe. Fat Joe came to see me in my mm -hmm. studio and said, fuck reggaeton. So he knows, he knows, I get, he came to me and said, they ain't never going to love you like you love them. And you proved them wrong. He, no, he was right. That, <laughs> on that situation, he was right. He was, they, they, they never did love me how I loved them. But he was wrong in the fact that I had to sacrifice me for my people. Mm. Like, I love being Puerto Rican. I, it's not no fucking, I never said I was yeah, black. There's no secret or nothing. I yeah. never said I was Puerto Rican. I always be black Rican. I love that shit. I love it. I love eating chicharron and I mean, but, you know, but if you know your history and all that, yeah. period, I love then it, Then you man. know that we all black too. Yeah, you know exactly, exactly. I mean, that's only for the ignorant people. But, I, but I'm just telling you. That's what we're here for, to enlighten them. I love teach, growing you know up on Willie Colon and Hector Laval, and then the next day listening what? to Mark. Listening to Marvin Gaye and yeah, Luca, you know early, what I'm saying? Like early. my moms and father, up. my moms we and father the, we were battle. They that. were battle. They were battle. Like right. we, we, we listening to the, you know that, and then listen like I, I love that. So when I grew up, I love I love being exactly who I was the only one in yeah, the can too. in me any too. jail I ever went to that played handball and basketball. Facts. Like I played handball with the with the fucking M.A. Thresse dudes. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. yeah, for real. Like the the yeah. Handball, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I will never, like, when the Latin Kings, like, first really kind of formed, right? Not, 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 not I, I was there. But when they first, I remember, um, I'm in the can. When it started blowing up. Yeah, when it started blowing up. So they, they asked me to go to the dentist. So they're like, yo, yo, Victor Santiago. So I didn't know that they, they set me up. So I raised my hand. They're like, no, not you, the other Victor Santiago. So I'm looking like, there's no other Victor Santiago. But they looking like, this guy's not Latino. <laughs> I guess they ain't seen my fucking, my eyebrows or something. So they looking like, they looking like, they're not, not the black guy. Cause that's how, that's how they recruiting. They yeah. take you to the dentist, putting a knife to your head, yeah. giving you beads. Mm -hmm. And if you are black, they giving you nectar beads. So because <laughs> to be Latin King, you gotta be pure mm -hmm. Latino, I believe. So. I go to the dentist, the fucking CO is down with it and everything. Like, this is crazy. Like, as soon as I get there, they, they knives everywhere. I'm like, oh, shit. They're like, yo, don't tell people you black. Just tell people you Puerto Rican and you with us. We're about to run the whole jail. I was like, this is not what I could do, bro. I'm like, yo, man, you might as well just kill me, man. I can't. Listen, I'm black. What was this at? This was... This was no, I mean, like, Goshen. Oh, Goshen. Goshen. This Goshen. was Goshen, yeah. Goshen was tough. Goshen, yeah. Yep, this was Goshen. So, uh... I, I got, I'm like, a, uh, nah, man, that's the one thing I can't do. Uh, it, the same thing if the blacks did that to me with the 5% and said, yo, you can't represent Latinos, I would have did the same thing. I would have been like, nah, man. Yeah, you would have been like, I, man, I can't. I, I, I'm both, bro. I, yeah, I'm, both. I'm, I'm repping both, man. That's mm -hmm. who I am. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Real so the talk. whole, so, so Drink Champ came about yeah, drink. based, on, based on, on, on that phone call, you know, Jay-Z waking yeah. you up, like, oh, shit, hold up. I might, I might be onto something around here. And, and you know, I'm going to tell you something, bro. This is why. This is why being selfish is never good. Mm. Jay Z's told me, "I owe you one. When you fix this, I owe you one." Drink chance is starting to blow up. It's just starting to blow up a little bit. I get a call from a person I consider my brother, my big brother. His name is Fat Joe. Fat Joe calls me and says, "Yo, how did you get in contact with Jay Z?" And I said, "Joe." You don't get in contact with Jay-Z. Jay-Z gets in contact with you. He hollered at me. He said, but I know you. You a hustler. You ain't you ain't let it just go right there. I said, mm -hmm. nah, I did. <laughs> he mm -hmm. said, you got a tie to something. Mm -hmm. So I'm about to walk into the breakfast club, Pete. This is real talk. I got 2.5 seconds to, to think this out. Yeah, to get it right. And God said to me, what, what, what new record are you doing? I said, I'm not planning on doing the record. So God said, Jay-Z said he owes you a favor. Give that favor to Fat Joe. This is All The Way Up remix. So I say to myself, you got one Jay-Z favor. 
No one gets a Jay Z favor. No one, bro. Even Jay Z's friends don't get a Jay Z favor. Sure, they yeah. don't ask him for favors. And he said, "I owe you one if you do this." And Fat Joe calls me, and he says, "I need this." So I call Bleak. So I say, "Bleak, I'm about to walk in the Breakfast Club." And I want to give them my undivided attention, so I'm not answering the phone. I need you to, to do this. Bleak pulls over. He says, wait a minute. He pulls over. He's like, yo, I just seen Fat Joe two months ago. And Joe still had an ice grill on. <laughs> so said, Listen to me. That's my brother. It's over. He doesn't yeah, he doesn't want no beef. He's like, all right, just want, do me one favor, Nori. Can I speak to him first before I put him on the, on the phone with the big homie? That's Bleak's only request. Mm. Plus, he wanted to speak to Fat Joe. He I wanted guess. to make sure he was yeah, good. He wanted to make yeah. sure. And I had already told Joe, I said, yo, Joe, if I do this, it has to be over, over. Joe's like, yo, it's over, over. And my point of being, my point of bringing up this whole thing is I put Fat Joe in front of me. Mm. And from that moment on, Drink Chance was number one in the country, 71 weeks in a row. 71 weeks, bro. 71, yeah, let's make some noise for that guy. Right. Let's give him a 71 that shit. And um, you worked for that, that shit. Was, but I'm telling you, what it was was God put me in a position where they said, do something for somebody. Before you do something for yourself. Before you do something for yourself. And you're going to be blessed. And I will never have another Jay-Z favor, ever. <laughs> See, you got it in the red. <laughs> but, but when I listen to All The Way Up, that's the only thing I um I hate with All The Way Up is, and I'm saying this, Sean Peck, because I don't care. She, Joe shots out Peckas before he shots me out. He goes, Peckas, yo, Nori. And I'm like, Peckas worked for this man for seven years. Yeah. Peckas drink red wine with this man. He could have brought you in the room with this man. You asked me for this favor one sec. I did it for you in two minutes. Mm. And it was over. No disrespect to Peckas. I yeah, love yeah, Peckas. Yeah. yeah, of course. But Peckas could have did that move. He right. had 12 years to do it. I did it in two point, two, two minutes and 15 seconds. Mm. Swear to God. Swear to God. And it went down. And it, and it went down. God bless Peckas. That's my man. I love Peckas. Yeah, yeah, all blessings. He's, he's yeah. Greatest of gods and greatest red wine in the world. But... He could have hooked that up way faster than I did, but I did, and I, I never want nothing, anything back because, like I said, since then, Drink Chess has been number one and never and, and never looked. Yeah, back. you've been blessed and never looked back. Of but like, like 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 you said, God wanted me to do something. Now He wants you to do that. Yeah, of and, course. And that's my brother. That's my brother. Fat that's Joe. what's up. And it right. felt good. It felt great. No, no it not great. even good. It felt better. Yeah, it felt great. That's, that's what, what I'm better. saying. That's that's. I'll never have a Jay Z favorite yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. We're so Nori, so 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 now um mm -hmm. uh, um mm -hmm. you been home, you got yep. drink champ popping. What right. else you got going on? Well, uh to tell you the truth, the biggest thing, um they say to you know be successful, you're supposed to have seven um incomes, right? Mm -hmm. Seven ways of, of of getting money. Right. I'm gonna tell y'all like this. Drink champs has been so much of a blessing that drink chance went for my number seven. Mm. To my number one, mm. and it's it's allowing us to expand. So, like we just got offered the network, meaning where we could take your 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 your. I know you said you got business signed or somebody, but we could take your shit and bring your shit to Revolt. Take your shit, bring your shit to yeah, Titan. Yeah. Take your shit, bring your shit to Mass Appeal. Take your shit, bring your shit to uh, uh, anywhere, anywhere right. direct and have make deals. And I think that's what makes me great is making somebody else great me being great on my own is okay but me you know being able to you know uh, uh you know partner with espn expand your blessings yes that, that's 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 all it is for me it's like you know um i sat around with puff one day <laughs> i went to his house and he said he said to me you know nori sometimes i'm too rich to care and i had never heard no shit like that before in my life <laughs> he said Sometimes I'm too rich to care. And I looked at him and I was like, I'm nowhere near that. Nowhere near that. Me, <laughs> nowhere near I me care. So, I care. That, that's, I guess, you know, I, I guess that's how, that's how for or that's how down for. But we care. That's the difference. So I'm between sitting us. here with this guy and this guy, this is, he, does, he does the illest shit to me in the world. Like, Puff never, Puff, Jay, and Nas taught me more from watching them than them schooling me. So Puff says to me, yo, come sit on, on the money couch. I don't know what this is. So he takes us to the money couch. 
And then the shit is all red. He goes, you're not blood, right? I go, no, 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 I'm not gang, nothing. He's like, all right, cool. And he just, just some dude named Alfred or something just pops out of nowhere. And Puff goes, I don't like this too much red. Change this shit. And within three minutes, the whole fucking room turned turquoise. I don't know how the fuck this shit happened. You know where he had the furniture, where, where it yo, came from. This shit just turned a whole nother color. I sat there, I said, this is the level of rich I want to be. Mm-hmm. Where if I don't like the color of something, just change this shit. And there's a dude named Alfred. I didn't even know how he came out. Alfred yeah, just came out in three seconds. And I was just like, wow, this is beautiful, man. This is beautiful. Hey, Norby, uh-huh. I'm going to ask you, um, uh-huh. would you, how you feel about prison reform? Do, do um, you know what prison reform is? Oh, right? yeah, that's what Meek Mill and them is doing. Like, when people come home, right. giving them job opportunities. Right. right. And um, and in prison, meaning and, meaning changing the system or how corrupt it is and how, you know, they keep us in prison and, you know, yeah. shit is in jail. Because jail, jail is, you know, it's corrupt. Yeah. So how, how, you know, how important you think that is? I think, I think, I think um, uh, putting people, a lot, a lot of times, uh, uh, Pete, when people even go to jail it's because they ain't have opportunities, mm-hmm. right? Like everybody in the hood is not a criminal because they want to be a criminal. Everybody in the hood is a criminal because out of necessities. Mm-hmm. Like they need to be a criminal because they have to. They want to prosper in life. So that's really what it is. Like I think that if I had a chance to rap at thirteen, I wouldn't have sold crack at eleven. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I was selling crack at eleven years old. That's terrible. Like when you think about it, I look at my kids now. My kids, I'm about to celebrate my Noah's. You know what? That is horrible. I was selling cocaine. Yeah, (laughs) that's that's terrible. Um, And I was telling people I was 16. So, um, and they believed me. Lack for a better term, they knew I wasn't fucking 16. But even if I was 16, that didn't make it better. Mm -hmm. That was still horrible. And what I'm trying to tell you is, had I knew there was a route to take, other than selling drugs, I would have took it. It's just that. The coolest people in the world was the drug dealers. Like, I remember seeing a dude named Hit Hard Todd. Uh, he had a Jetta. He had a Volkswagen Jetta. I know y'all look, is looking, looking at me saying a Vols- Volkswagen Jetta, Nori, when you're out of line. Y'all don't know in the 80s, that shit was the shit. That he had a rag top, white, red, all red with BBS's. the BBS rims. He had the BBS rims. He used to come through with the with the with the vanilla, uh, the tree. You know, um, you know what I'm talking about? The um, the uh, um, um, the scent. The scent. No, he had the vanilla. Crazy. Scent. Every to this day, when I smell vanilla scent, I just want to sell crack. Like I was just like, oh shit. And <laughs> you go back to the jail. I go back, yo. Look, and all I'm trying to say, that was the coolest dude to me in the world. Like there wasn't rappers. Right. So that's the reason why. Like, rappers, we actually took the drug dealer's job mm. because before it was, you know, looking up to a dude named T-Bone, Hit Hard Tar, the Kiba, and, and things like that. But now you're looking up to Cameron, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, 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 Jim Jones, Fat yeah. Joe, Nori, yeah. uh, uh, things like that. So we kind of took the place of... A, I remember drug dealers used to laugh at the rappers. Like, ah. Oh. Facts. And now the drug dealers want to be rappers because, like I said, like the, earlier... A lot of the times, these big drug dealers, they're just ill in their neighborhood. And when they go to another neighborhood, people don't recognize them, people don't know them. But when they hang out with a person that's a, a rapper, they get into these clubs easier. They get into this. So rap really took the place of a drug dealer. Like, it really did. So prison reform is yeah. important. Prison reform is extremely Perative. important because you have to give people the opportunity. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, uh, a person won't snatch a purse if they could pack a bag. You understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, if, if, like, I wouldn't sell a crack if I could sell a record. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, but I don't, I don't have that opportunity. Most of the people don't have that opportunity. And how important is mm. mental health? Because a lot of us deal with a lot of mental health. A lot of people in prisons fucked up. A lot of people come home fucked up from mental health. A lot of people don't have support. They don't have their mom, dude. They don't have a dad. They don't have, which, how important you think mental health it is, period, for hip hop and, and prisoners coming home, period. Well, well, I'm glad you said that because what a lot of people don't know, Drink Champs is my therapy. That mm. is my mental health. Mm. My, my, t- my sitting down and, you know, conversating with somebody is the same thing as conversating with a therapist. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's the way I keep my mental health. That's the way I keep balance is me sitting down having these conversations. Like, you, you came by the other day uh, when we had Big U mm-hmm. and we had Bimmy and we had uh, Deb Antony and, we had Trick, the old crew. and we had Trick Trick, right? Yep. And I had them motherfuckers laughing. 
I had them joking. Yeah. And these guys supposed to be serious people. Like, you see when they came out, the Bimmy was all drunk. You yeah. know, everybody like, 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 so to me, that's a form of therapy. Mm -hmm. It's for me to sit down and me and you to be sitting down and be laughing and joking. And have a good and, time. And just have a good time. I, I like, you know, that's why I, I feel like I'm a form of therapy. I like when people sit, see me and people come and counter me, they're like, yo, Nori's a good guy, man. Nori's a man of his word. Nori's, you know what I mean? Such, 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 such. Like, like, the other, like, like when, even when we booked this, I was like, yo, tell, you know, because I was really busy every single day. But as I said it, I was proud of myself. Mm. Because I remember a day, Pete, I ain't have nothing to do. Yeah, nothing. you wasn't busy. I wasn't busy at all. Yeah, but you're grateful for being busy. I'm grateful I for know being you are, busy. Man. And yeah. that's why you're going to continue I'm to be blessed. I'm humbled, man. Nah, facts, I'm very humble. You hear me? Word, yes, sir. Nah, yes, facts. Sir. I, I feel yeah, I'm feeling you up, baby. We're going to take a shot on this <laughs> shit. Yeah, let's go, baby. I feel you on yeah. that. Nah, that's word, real shit. Word, I ain't going to lie, bro. I'm was solid. Plenty of times. So, plenty of times, bro. I'm going to call you. Yep. And I'm going to tell you something. I was the guy that I forced myself into being a boss. And I really, really, really just wanted to just be me, 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 right? And I realized something. That shit is hard being a boss. Mm. Don't be afraid to sometimes be the boss here, but humble yourself and be able to take a job somewhere else. Like me, I'm starving to work for somebody else. Me. Being yeah. a boss is so hard on me. Yeah. Because... It's a lot on me. Like, drink chance, that's a lot on it's me. It's a lot of responsibilities. Like, as, although people love the other brothers and everybody else attached to me, people be wanting to speak to me. Mm -hmm. They be like, yo, tell Nori I want this, this, and this. And I'm like, damn. So it's, it's so much pressure on me. So I'm just letting y'all know, like, I like to take the pressure off of myself at times. And, um... And I, I don't mind working for somebody. I don't mind. But the therapy is there. Therapy, Do yes. drink champs. Yeah, no, that is my therapy. That's bro. right. But uh -huh. therapy, as far as the mental health, is very important yeah. for those yes. that don't have drink champs. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot but of brothers... they can make their own drink champs. That's good. You know what we're doing? Like, I'm getting with Ray J. And, um, what we're doing right now, what I want to do with Ray J and Ray Khan, is start the podcast starter kit. So if you want to do a podcast and you... Only got five hundred dollars. I want to give you the whole starter kit. The whole. So kit, you got uh -huh. the mics, you got the headphones, you got the engineering, you got the whole vibe, you got everything. And I want to do it under Raycom because eventually all artists will have a podcast. Eventually, because mm -hmm. why would you go to? We love Angie Martinez. We love uh, Ebro in the morning. But why would you go to them and you're promoting to their fans? Yeah. When you could promote to your own oh, fans. Your own fans, correct. Right? Yeah. Just think about that. It doesn't make sense. So so radio, terrestrial radio will live forever. So Angie Martinez will have a job forever. Ebro, uh, Breakfast Club will have a job forever. Yeah. But the actual platform won't live forever. Right. Because we 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 we, we know how to promote to the people that's gonna buy to us. Right. Like sometimes getting your shit in Costco's isn't a win. Mm -hmm. Because Costco sells so much other shit. Costco sell fish. Yeah. Why the fuck are they gonna buy your knee pads? If you sell the knee pads, right. why the fuck are you in Costco's in any other place you'd be like, that's a win. Cause mm -hmm. you cause you know you're in the in the Costco's. But if these people are here to buy fish food and fish, they're not looking at no fucking knee pads. Right. Take your shit to sporting goods store. Right. You understand know what I'm saying? Yeah, I hate that name. <laughs> I just want to say that. You want to say that? I don't want to say that. <laughs> I hate that yeah, name. <laughs> Remember, we got the Linus Lewis gloves from there. Yeah, but um, but yeah. So um, getting back, like like I said, let me let me reverse it to you. Like I appreciate what you do. Like you know what I'm saying. Like you know you you you're down with Terror Squad. You're down with We the Best. You're down with everybody. But you're doing your own life in your hands. Facts. And that's that's what makes you the ultimate boss. You know what I'm saying. That's what makes you the ultimate mm -hmm. ultimate. And I gotta salute that. I gotta respect that. Appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? And it's and it's, and it's recognized. It's recognized because like, you're standing on your own, and that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I'm in my own lane. Yeah, yeah that's a beautiful thing. My it's own lane. Thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? My own. This, this, you know, like who else gonna speak about prison? Yep. Who else gonna talk you about the, jail? Um, then you jail have king. the um <laughs> the um the book. You came to my studio. I don't know if you remember this. You came to my studio with Steve LaBelle, I believe, with the hip hop. Um, oh, hip hop police. Yeah, the hip hop I police. Did book. I yeah. filmed that. Yeah, I yeah. did that. I did. I did that before the Zana. Wow. I did that film. I did. I, okay. I love. I love the film. Um, business. Mm. Um, 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 yeah, let me tell you something. Uh -huh. That's my passion. 
Oh, the film shit. The film shit. It's much easier. This whole shit part. Yeah. I don't have it's to deal with artists. Rap. I don't have yeah, to deal with rappers. Exactly, exactly. You know, I dealt with rappers when when, 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 Cal, when, when, Khaled, <laughs> when Khaled first signed that he tried to get the, the deal at, at, at E1 with mm. Alan Grunblatt, right? Mm. I was already up there. Mm. I had a situation with Alan Grunblatt, you mm. know, for Kill, for kill All Raps, right? K.R., yeah. K.R. Yep. And, um... With that being said, Norby's one of the first guys that wore KR shirt right, on the right, right back. That's right. I want to appreciate I appreciate that's you for right, that. That's right. I wear another one. Send believed, me some more. First one that believed in Kill O Rats and all that was Norby. He that's wore right. lean back, yeah. check it out on that video. He's the one with the Kill O Rat white t shirt and all right, that. That's right. That's right. Focus. That's right. That's right. But with that being said, mm -hmm. I took Kill O Rats and nobody believed everybody was children from supporting it right. to just being scared of it. Oh my God, you're going too hard with Kill O Rats. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. they went dumb. I turned it into something positive mm -hmm. and got a deal with Alan Grum Black. You know, had a great situation. Alan Grum Black, you know, I met him through Steeler Bell when we mm -hmm. became, to this day, right. we right. good. Good relationship right. and all that, right? Yeah. And, um, through his, through his issues, because he always had issues with mm. Shug, this mm. one, I saved his ass through right. all that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's how imagine. it really went down. Yeah, I know. So, I um, imagine. um, you know, so with that being said, I, and instead of me going the route where I called Nori, called right, Joe, right. and put him on the record with my producer, right. I, I decided to help others. Right. And thought about, let me snatch up four local artists from the right. hood right. and give them a record to deal. Right. I remember you used to have a video in Miami and yeah, shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, Nori? Yep. But that's just the way we yeah. are. We, nah, we, we not selfish doing the people. Right thing. You feel me? We definitely gonna give with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I got a kite. Mm -hmm. You know it's a kite, right? Mm -hmm. A letter, right? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know a nigga hit you with the kite. So I got uh -huh. a kite reason. Okay. Uh, I know this dog of the yard, but I got a kite about Cuban Link disrespecting you. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and getting on the social media. Oh, yeah, 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 And yeah. Um, being mm -hmm. crazy, reckless with it and all that. I mean, how mm -hmm. you take that, you know, I mean, all you, all, you, all you practice is positive vibe. And, you know, so for that to come at you, I mean, where we at with that? Um, You know, to tell you the truth, and that's the first time I addressed it. I, want, I kind of wanted to address it. I thought I wanted to address it. But um, to say the truth, when I've met Terror Squad, I, I, I met everybody together. Mm -hmm. I didn't know there was a Pistol Pete section. There's a you know there's separation. A Raul section. Yeah, yeah. There's a Rich Flair section, <laughs> and there's a you know different but, sets. Yeah, because every this it within Terror Squad. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Uh, but I stayed loyal to the squad. Yeah, yeah. I stayed loyal to the squad. This shit is good. Yes, yes. This is this is that good shit. So I stayed loyal to the squad. Great, thank you. I called Joe. Because the people who actually put together Big Pump Plaza is my friend. It's a guy named Super O. Super O was from uh, Harlem. And Super O hit me in Salo and said, and said, I didn't want to invite you to the actual event because I know how, I know you, you Terror Squad, you, you, you TS. So I said, yeah. He said, I know it would have been awkward because I had, you know, whatever he these had. other guys here. Yeah, he, 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 you know, but he didn't invite these other guys, right? They just showed up. I actually was on the phone with him as they showed up. So what happens is, I say, you know, that's great. I'm standing with Joe. I'm standing, you know, that's that's my brother. You know, Joe. Yeah, you been stand there. where it was loyalty. Yeah, of course. Where, Joe's you been loyalty there Joe. for me Facts. For, forever, and you know what? He doesn't have to you ask me. You don't have to explain yeah, that shit. Yeah, yeah. But I'm explaining to the audience. So Facts. he doesn't have to ask me what to go or what not to go. But I felt obligated on my own. So I said, I'm from New York City. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to the Bronx. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do my own Big Pun Plaza tribute on my own. Facts. I didn't think I did anything wrong. I go there. I take a picture. I take a video because I do it the instant video first. Because, you know, instant video is right there. Because I want niggas to know right. just in case. Yeah, you there. Like, I'm there. So I did the instant video first. I pull up. Nothing but love. Everybody comes, shows me love. I stay there. Um, Cause I can't believe where it's at. When I really realized where it's at, I'm like, damn, my, my bro like really made it. Like this uh, is- He's at the right spot. Yeah, he's at the right, he's across the street from the bank. I'm like, damn, this is dope. And then I post this shit. And somebody goes, oh my God, you're three days late. And I'm like, damn. Somebody and, like who? Like this, this was just some just, oh. just some random dude. Everywhere, I'm talking about 99% of the shits is is positive. And then the only yeah, you person get that, that one corny hating ass. And then the one person that retweets <laughs> him is this guy. And I'm like, yo, listen, let me just describe something to you. When you have a problem with somebody, you're supposed to keep your problem with just them. When you reflect everyone else, that's what makes you a hater. Mm. That's like. If you mad at Diego, 
You're supposed to just be mad at Diego. Like, Diego, you fucked up in the room. But when you say, I'm mad at Diego, I'm mad at Pete, I'm mad at fucking uh, 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 Steve LaBelle, and I'm yeah. mad at anything that's yeah, yeah, yeah. affiliated to you. Yeah. Now you're on the level of being a hater. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, even yeah. though we knew you was being a hater, you're on a super level of being a hater mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, I'm still rapping pun. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with me rapping pun. I'm not going to let anybody tell me me rapping pun is wrong. Can't. I can't. Listen, there's so many pictures of pun wearing my T-shirt because he couldn't fit it. He was too big. And he yeah, got the nobody, Noriega you a around You had a relationship with I, him. I love though, this man. This man loved me. So the fact is that the fact that, that, that he could critique me, that he, he could come at me, and, you know, he's uh, the homie, the dude, he did he's doing so much things saying, you know, why I ain't allowed on Drink Champs and why? Well, it's simple, bro. Joe owns Drink Champs <laughs> with us. Yeah, like, it's simple, bro. Like, I don't have no problem. If y'all want to settle it, I'm not going to settle a problem that you got with, with my, my bro until you settle it. Facts. When y'all settle it, I'm more than happy to do whatever. He should know the vibe. He now. should know the as, vibe, as, as bro. A, as a street guy, right? Mm -hmm. He should know the deal. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot more things that he could be worried about. There's a lot more things he should be worried about. I get Usually it. His energy with some other shit. His yeah. energy is just the thing about it is, bro. That's them. That's that New York demons. That's some demons, man. <sighs> that's some demons. And you know, I'm on my side. I'm on. I'm on the side. Man, let's be clear. Joe's my brother, but I pay my own mortgage. I pay my own car notes. I, so I'm on, on my own boss. So I'm not following anything and anything. I'm following what I think is right. Yeah. And I'm going to say this because I've never said this. You know, there's rumors about Tupac wanting to leave Suge Knight. Right. There's even rumors about Biggie wanting to leave Puff. Or not wanting to leave him, just start his uh, a whole other. His whole different. There's shit. never no fucking rumor of Pun wanting to leave Joe, bro. Yeah. Pull up that rumor for me. It was all love. Like I knew them both. Yeah. So the fact is, what happened afterwards is a mess. Mm hmm But I gotta look at what happened prior to that. Facts. And if, if Pun, me and Pun had a real relationship, if Pun ever sat me down and was like, yo, man, I feel like Joe's doing me wrong, boom, 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 I would have brought that up. Yeah, it sure would have been in your back of your car, of course. Never, bro. Mm -hmm. The only thing he's like, yo, this is the only thing I ever heard Pun say. Yo, when Joe come, he's going to make sure. <laughs> he's going to make sure. You got to tighten up. You got to tighten up. Yeah, of course. Like, yo, you got to, that's it. So I get where the other side is coming from, you know. They saying this, this, and that, the business and they all that. They sour, they hating, they mad, they in the Bronx. I, I get it. You know? I get it. You know, um, I get it, but let's just be, Listen, let's stand by, on facts. Let's bottom line facts. is you loyal yeah. to Joe. I'm loyal, that's it. You Joe's friend. I'm Whoever saying. you met, yep. you met Pun, you met Joe, you met them yep. all through them. Mm -hmm. So if you're not cool with the people that you we met you, then, then we obviously not cool. Yeah. Because if you're not cool with them, so how you expect to be cool with you? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I had that situation. Mm -hmm. I need I need you to you share. Me? Help me out. I had that, I had <laughs> that situation okay. with Cuban. Okay, wow. No, I, I'm gonna have Cuban to pulled up. Uh-huh. He we was in the club. Uh-huh. He seen Steve LaBelle. Uh-huh. I was down the block talking to some people in the car. Uh-huh. Steve LaBelle and them come running. <sighs> I was like, where you running, Steve? Okay. You know, Maradona said what's going on around here. <laughs> Steve was like, ah, Cuban Lane, he got mad people with him. <laughs> they, they were trying to chase me down, trying to get at me. It's the bang bang boogie so, days. So so I don't even okay, know what the fuck. You know, because I don't I don't <laughs> yeah, pay that yeah, shit. Yeah, I don't yeah. give a fuck what the fuck is the shit. <laughs> this bang, that yeah. bang, yeah. down with that. I don't mm. that shit don't right. matter to me. Right. So he come running. <sighs> mm. And I'm like, I'm in the car talking to me. I'm like, yo, what's up, man? You good? What's right. going on? He's right. like, yo. Cuban, so I already know Cuban was in the club. Uh -huh, cool. They didn't want me in the club. They yeah. was like, Pete, we try to, please don't want no problems. Right. You know, we're going to get them out and then let you in. Right. Or something, you right. know, please just right. chill. Mm -hmm. You know, this is like me coming home on my kilo rat, you know. Right. It's on and pop. You know, right. I was turned up a little. Right. Yeah. He runs over. Cuban come behind him with a bunch of dudes. Mm -hmm. Shut up, shit. Like they want to get, hold up, he come right here. No, T.A. Mm -hmm. Oh, T.A., yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. T.A. pull up. Pipe man, right? Yeah, okay. T.A. come out, boom. Uh, he grabbed the bat from the whip, boom, mm -hmm. he's around. Boom, mm -hmm. he over there somewhere. Mm -hmm. What's up? 
Right. I'm like, all right, cool. Everybody right. focus, right? Uh, yeah. He come. Steve right here. I'm like, what's up? Ain't nothing happening. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Yo, pistol. I thought we was brothers. Right. I thought we was homies. I thought I was your little man. Right. Forget about all that, bro. Right. That shit is all erased. I met mm -hmm. you through this one guy. Mm -hmm. This is who I'm loyal to. Right. Ain't nothing happening. Right. What's up? Right. What we trying to? Where we going from here? Cause mm -hmm. ain't nothing happening with Steve. Mm -hmm. You know, Steve is my brother. I love mm -hmm. Steve. So where we at mm -hmm. with it? Right. He had one guy, big or the biggest black guy with him, mm -hmm. right. which I'm happy. Thank God, right? right. He was like pistol. We was up top together, yo. He was a fan, yo. Mr. P, yeah. yo, you that nigga, man. And, and, and I got that, I got the bang on him. I'm like, I'm uh, like, you know, I'm going to uh, take like 10 of y'all guys down. Uh, you uh, know, we focus on this side. So uh, he was confused. And I was like, listen, it's nothing personal, B. Right. I'm, I'm, and it's the truth. That's the truth, yeah. I'm just loyal to Joe, so yeah, we are never be friends, bro. Right. I'm honestly speaking, like, I right. can't, and you can't get no ride with me because, right. like, you like, I met you through this man. What? So and I'm going right. to this man. So mm. you know, and that's the that's the so don't feel bad. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're gonna get the no, you, I don't feel bad. That's what I'm saying. And you and, and you gonna No, get, I do feel bad. You're gonna get the I hate. Do feel bad. That's, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. You're gonna yeah. get the hate. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna get the anger. Right. You're gonna get that from him. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, and, and, and my that's thing real. is, man, listen, man, find something constructive to do. Yeah. Cause ain't nobody nobody even paying attention to that energy. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Right. right. That's what right. I would tell you. Fuck yeah. all that. Nah, you know what I'm saying? Because we're not paying attention to that energy. You know what I'm saying? And you know, the only reason why it did bother me a little bit is because I just remember the relationship from the beginning. I remember everybody You thought it together was all love, regardless. For, by the way, let me just tell y'all something, bro. And this is real shit. I based my whole life about how Terror Squad was so tight. Yeah. Like, I was like, I want my crew to be like that. I got my family from the Bronx. I got, and I, I was like, yo, you know. Yeah, the that, loyalty, the bond. I wanted, I wanted, I wanted that. And I didn't know anything until after. And I was put in a position where not I had to choose, I chose. Mm -hmm. I just chose. It was just like, that's, it was simple. It was simple, man. Um, you know, Joe has been there for me. Like, he's been there for me. And I'm going to be there for him. You know what I'm saying? That's the reason why I gave him that Jay-Z favor. And that's Facts. the reason why God has blessed me. Like, he don't ever have to pay me back. Or I think I still owe Joe. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, he's done so much more favors for me. But what I'm trying to say is, so I just had to be, it's not like I was being deliberate or mm. being mean or being like, because one, one rumor was, yo, no, we just listen to whatever Joe says. And whatever Joe says, and that's not the truth. Although, my loyalty does bring me there. Mm -hmm. But um, if Joe is wrong, I tell Joe he's wrong. Like, we go to Carbones, and he just picks off my plate. I hate it. Yes. I hate it. Like, he doesn't say anything. <laughs> no. It don't bother me. I don't care. Most of the time, I ask him, "Yo, Joe, what's the best thing they got in this restaurant?" And he won't order it. He'll go he'll, on your yeah, plate. Yeah, he'll, he'll act like it's nothing. He'll be like, Yo, this is, "Like this is my brother. I love him." But so what I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is, loyalty ain't based on money. Mm -hmm. Loyalty ain't based on our status. Loyalty is based on your heart. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, Pete? Me and you. Yeah. I don't give a fuck if you probably came in here and you would have had. A fucking a dog in the yard, literally. Like I've been in the yard with yeah, yeah, a dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have did the shit. Did, yeah, yeah, yeah. The shit. Because it's not based on if you up or if you if you if you not. It's based on heart. Let me tell you. You always been a great nigga to me. Listen, besides Facts. just me knowing you through TS and, and and everything. Besides that, when we see each other, it's always loyal. It's always respect. I know that if y'all in the building, y'all with me. I know that if I'm in the building, I'm with 100%. you. percent And that's it. It's just certain shit that don't have to be discussed. So the thing is, I always, and I know I'm naive. I know I'm naive. I always wish that Terror Squad would come back together. Like, mm. I, I know I'm naive. I'm not going to sit here and say, like, I'm smart when it comes to this. So that's why I never wanted to say nothing. I never wanted to defend myself. Right. Because I don't want a stone that says... You know what? But in 2021, Nori said this, this, about this. So now they can't put it together. Like, I, I'm mad that we can't tell Big Pun's story. Because you know why? God bless the family. Everything is all broken up. God bless uh, the dude that we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. And God bless Joe. But that documentary, that story can't be told without everybody. No, it needs to be all together. It needs to be. And... and 
It will never happen. It will never happen. So God bless so me. So many people, you know, got hurt, feelings hurt. And I, I feel where Joe is coming from. Joe wants that apology. Nah, that's what he wants. That's all he wants. And listen to me. I know this man. Let me tell you You so. know this man. For a fact, Joe never robbed nobody. Joe didn't rob this man. I, we had the same lawyers, bro. We had the same everything. And I'm not saying this because Joe is my friend. I'm telling you, I looked at the paperwork myself. Mm -hmm. I looked at not all of it. I didn't, I didn't have all of it. Mm -hmm. But I, but from what I see, it's this, it was the standard shit. It was just the standard. But, but so my, what I'm trying to say is, when I look at Wu Tang's documentary, I look at the the, the shit with Wu Tang, and I look at their documentary on Showtime, and I look at the shit on Hulu, and I sit back and I say, "Damn, pun, we could never have that for pun." No, and that's kind of fucked up. Just to because me. of so, the ignorance. So what I, I always wish, and I know I'm naive, like I said earlier, I always wish that we could do something for pun, and everybody kind of like be a part of it. And mind their business. Everybody can say they say. Everybody be at yep. peace. Cause every there's there's something like the, the tribute for um for uh uh, uh Chris Lighton. Yeah, yeah. Like why the fuck can't we do that for our brother? You know what I'm saying? So I know there's different styles, and I don't care. I I, I told people what side I chose. I told people what side I'm on. Mm -hmm. But a part of me always wants to tell a pun story, like. I, I really like when Super O and them came to me, they was like, yo, we want to do a big pun documentary. And I was like, that shit is dope. And he's like, we need Joe. And I was like, it's not going to happen. And then I did call Joe. And Joe asked for one request. And I didn't think it was too bad. He just wanted an apology. So, mm -hmm. and um, I tried to do as much as I can. I think I got up to like almost 90%. But then, and I'm sorry because I know we was wrapping up, but I gotta get this off my chest because a lot of people don't get know this. Only a lot of people don't. Know, a lot of people don't know this. My only argument I ever had with Fat Joe ever was that Sunday service, Kanye West. <laughs> we in church, yeah. and Fat Joe steps to me because I I couldn't make it to the pun mm. tribute. This is how much this nigga loves pun. That's what I'm trying to tell you. We're in Kanye West Sunday service. We're in church. And Fat Joe steps to me. Because I had, and I'm going to be honest, I had Floyd Mayweather on Monday and I had Lil Wayne mm. on Wednesday. Had I went to New York, I would have missed one of them. So I said, Joe, please, man, you know, we could pay puns, respect our mother. Way. He was like, this is the last time we're going to be able to do this. You know, in the room. And I was like, Joe, I just, I can't, I can't make it. You don't understand. Your back was like, against the wall. You like, drink like, champs. I, yeah. I need a day off when I do drink champs. Mm -hmm. When I do drink champs, no one's never seen me the next day. I'm out of it the next yeah. day because I really give it all. So anyway, Joe is sitting there and he's, he argued with me like, yo, bro, we were supposed to be there for a pun. Mm -hmm. like, blah, 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 blah. And I'm looking at Joe and we, it's the first time we ever argued. And I'm like, damn, bro, I wish the world could see this. Yeah, like so you, you can see how much you love. They can see how much you love. Like he's sitting there, we're arguing. The world knows. Let me tell you something. No, 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 no. The but, world but, knows he loved pun. No, no, no. But well, my part was when this big pun plaza shit kept. They tried to go at my man. Yeah, so that's the reason why I went and I said, "Fat Joe Terror Squad." I said, "Terror Squad." I thought I had my Terror Squad chain on. I had it in the car, but <laughs> but I was like, "Damn, I'm you was wrong, wrong, wrong chain." I was like, "Wrong chain." But I'm sitting there, Terror Squad, Terror Squad. And people just, they're looking at my side. They're like, oh, Nori's just uh, mm. just repping for Joe. They don't understand. Joe almost fought me for not coming to Big Puns. You know, fair weight present. Nah, he was in his feelings about he was, it. And yeah. what I'm trying to tell you is the world don't see that. Uh, these other guys, the family, they don't see how passionate he is. Mm -hmm. The thing is, he felt like he was done wrong, as is other people. Mm -hmm. I can't knock that man. I can't tell yeah. him what to do or how to do it or, or, or which way. What I can say is I got to show support. And let me just tell you something. I got two eyes, bro. I got two eyes. So even if one is super loyal, the other one is straight. And one's going to see. And if I'm staying with my two eyes, I'm staying right here, it's for a reason. Yeah. It's for a reason because I... Not, you got your own judgment anyway, yeah. bro. And you yes. see what it is. Yes. You're not no fool. And I ain't, I ain't no fool. I ain't no bozo. Yeah. And like I said, bro... Just, to, just for the record. Yes.
You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yo. And all yes, in the yes. Building. Thank you. Thank you. Dog in the but fucking yard. You know, first time why I ever shows talk. like this is important? Because for the youth. youth. Listen, you know why? Because we, we need you to keep you out of jail. There you we go. We need you to keep you out of the yard. There you go. We need to keep you out of the yard. And this is important. This is therapeutic for me because I never spoke about this. There you go. I ain't going to lie to you. Even Joe told me to chill, but I said, nah. I said, if I go on Pete, and Pete asked me, I said, I'm going. And and let's just be clear, I didn't go in. And I, we I didn't we go on positive vibes. We on positive vibes because. Positive vibes. Because. But I wanted just to bring that how you, yeah, you know, with all the positive energy you have, for yeah. that to come out of nowhere when you really ain't, didn't expect that. It, it, it hurt me. It didn't hurt me where I couldn't lose sleep. Right. But it hurt me was like, because, yo, bro. TS is a beautiful crew. Like, like I know you a TS, so you mm -hmm. you're you 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 inside TS. Like mm -hmm. I'm I'm like right there outside. <laughs> like no, I'm no, TS. No, TS. No, no, but you know what I'm saying. Like we don't look at you like that. You still let you know. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> I know what love, you mean. We love like y'all loyalty. Mm -hmm. Like being Puerto Ricans and mm -hmm. beyond being Puerto Ricans, being Latinos and having that bond. Yep. That was something that we look forward to. So that's why I know, you know, mm -hmm. when these discrepancies, people Facts. don't address it, but. It's a bigger picture, and the bigger picture is we all love pun. Facts. We all love pun. Nobody can say, you, no one can look at me in my <laughs> face and say, you know, Joe wasn't there, so he didn't love pun. Yeah. And, you know, J-Lo wasn't there, so he didn't love pun. It's just not like that. The thing is, and I'm going to say this because I've seen, you know, other people addressing this shit. The thing is, had it been Fat Joe throwing this event, had it been that, you would have had J Lo there. Yeah. You would have had Ruben Diaz there. You would have had everybody had that stamp. The, the problem is the person that threw it. Who is my man? Super mm -hmm. O. He don't got that power. He didn't even have the power to invite me. Yeah. <laughs> and he got my personal phone number. So that's it. Listen, Big Pun is forever. No one's never gonna make me stop repping Big Pun. No one. Facts. No one's never gonna. Make, we love Big Pun, and and I'm gonna say this on the last note. This is the last note. The illest shit was when Big Pun's son had to make the decision on his own. Like I said, when Joe mm -hmm. was talking about, mm -hmm. he wanted Big Pun's son to do bad from TV with me, mm -hmm. which is amazing. What I didn't know was after we argued at church, because Joe came to see me again. <laughs> Yeah, I know that. After church. <laughs> After church, he, he came went to go see, see me again. He, he went, to, he went to see me in the yard again. And he came, he was like, this is why I was mad. And he's sitting there and he's spinning. He's like, and he told me what he invited Big Pun's son. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I know this is something that Joe didn't really want to hear. But I said, you know, because I did a song with Big Pun's son on Terminology's record. Mm. And when we did the video, what I didn't know was Big Pun's son really doesn't know the truth. He doesn't really know his father. Hmm. He was like 10 or 11. I don't know what, what, what yeah. year it was. So I'm sitting there and I'm hitting him with stories and I'm telling him about his past. And what I realized is like, you know, to a certain extent, I'm talking to a, not a stranger. Like he knows him, but... He was a child. He don't really know him. Yeah, he doesn't really know him. So, he don't know him like you know him. Yeah, so when I'm sitting there, not not, not to say like me and Pum was super best friend, I'm just saying we were close. But when I'm sitting there, I'm like, all right, so when Joe tells me this, I knew how hurt Joe was. Because he's saying, yo, beyond you and your moms, you're a grown-ass man. You can make this decision on your own now. Like, are you going to pull up? And from what I was told, the dude hit him back and said, oh, I don't know what he, I don't remember what he said, but it was like, you know, I got to talk to my moms first or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. He's, just under the, he's just under that command, you know, he's just. But that was the, that was really the foulest draw mm -hmm. is because this man flew up. He, he's willing to flew me, he's willing to get, fly me a private jet, jet just to come and perform for his brother, who is your father, I'm talking mm -hmm. about, you know, Pun, um, Baby Pun, um, Chris Rivers, and you couldn't say, you know what, let me, let, let me be a man on this. Not, not to say he's not a man, but I'm just saying, I know I know Joe's side. Mm -hmm. And coming from Joe's side, I can see where he, he's hurt. I can see where he's like, you know what, you know, I would look at old Puerto Rican Day Parade footage of all of us at the Puerto Rican Day Parade, and I seen Joe's kids with Pun's kids, and I'm like, 
This shit is just cool as fuck. It's cool as fuck. So, you know what? To all sides, you know what? We all love pun. Let's Facts. just keep it positive. That's right. Let's keep it positive. Let's get it. We're not gonna be perfect. No, no one. Not you. Not gonna be perfect. I'm not gonna be perfect. Joe not gonna be perfect. No one's not gonna be perfect. But the only thing that we all got in camaraderie, the only thing that we all got the same that is perfect is our love for pun. So that's it. That's it. And with that, we're going to wrap it up, man. You already know what it is. Your boy, Pistol Pete, that mm. dog in the yard, NRE in the fucking building, <laughs> yes, Queens sir. in the building, yes, sir. Drink Champ in the building. You already know. Diego, Diego, what's up? I yes, see sir. you. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Salud. Your boy, Pistol, man. You already know how we do it, man. Dog in the yard, man. Mm. Brah. Season four. Let's get it. Yo, 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 welcome back to that dog in the yard. And you already know that part two is Super Fuego. You know what I'm saying? No related down. I mean, we got an all, we got, we got, we went, we took it, we took it all over, man. We took it to the Bronx after the yard. You know what I'm saying? So, but we clarified a bunch of shit, man. You know what I'm saying? That was needed to be uh, clarified. Meaning, you know, his whole shit with, you know, with the bozo guy in the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? And all that corny shit. So, um, you know, we took it all over, man. And I hope you guys enjoyed the, the, the uh, two-part episode. You know what I'm saying? I love having Nori on my show. You already know Drink Champs. You already know I'm going to be on that real soon. You know what I'm saying? So stay focused, man. You already know what it is. Your boy, Pistol Pete. Appreciate the love. Hope y'all got something out, out the whole interview. You know what I'm saying? For all the youngsters out there. You know what I'm saying? You can always go to jail, but you can always come home and do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? So you already know. With that, I'm going to let you go, man. It's your boy, Pistol Pete, man. Dog in the yard. This that yak music. Dog in the yard. Pistol P. SF. And this DJ Carrot. Let's go. Uh, I don't move unless it's bands. Diamond stars all in my rings. She don't move unless it's bands. But the hood is ain't no.